to the cloud. We are recording. Great. Okay. So, a quick recap for people like we are uh, broadcasting today from my friend Helena Conradi's apartment in Cape Town. Uh, there's no heat in the in the theater in the room where we're working and it's really cold in Cape Town today. So we decided to stay here. And if you hear screaming from the other room, South Africa is playing New Zealand in a big, big rugby match. And the entire country is only caring about one thing at the moment, and that is rugby. But we, of course, are here caring about restative day two. Um, let me just look around the room and see how many of you were here yesterday. Roshi was here, Oksana. Um, we're, we will review a couple of the things from yesterday's um, session that you kind of need. So mostly today we have a, a slideshow um, that will kind of organize your thoughts about how we are going to go from libretto to score. So the first thing we're doing is we are going to review step two of yesterday, okay? And that is the part of the libretto work that you really have to write into your score uh, to whatever extent you need, depending on how comfortable you are with the language and the style already. So a quick review. <clears throat> All Italian recitative is written in versi sciolti. Somebody wanna tell me in the chat what the arias and uh, ensembles are written in. If it's not versi sciolti, it is versi. It starts with an L. Somebody know? I will write in the chat. Versi lirici. That is what the arias and ensembles are in. But versi sciolti, deconstructed, broken, free uh, verse. I remind you that it... A seven and 11 syllable line. Somebody want to tell me in the chat what is a seven Italian syllable line called? It starts with an S. If I type faster than you, I will type it. A settenario. And an 11 syllable line is the classic Italian line called an endecasilabo. Okay. Um, so it is free verse. It is free of what? It is free of rhyme. At the end of the versi sciolti, you will find a rhyming couplet, just that way you do in Shakespeare when you get to the rhyming couplet at the end of blank verse. The, a reminder of the rule that you will not have two long syllables next to each other. And that one of the big parts of preparing your recitative is speaking your libretto so that you can feel how the language scans. It's like a simple version of that idea. So here is some version then of how I marked up the libretto that we worked on with Derek yesterday, right? And so what you will see here is that I have marked my long syllables Manipote mia cara, non mi seccate più. So those um, dark red lines under the syllables are to help you remind you where the long syllables are, right? That's the first thing you will see. Uh, the next thing you see, actually, the first thing you see is the phrasal doubling. I remind you that you can go to free resources on the website to get the free uh, phrasal doubling cheat sheet. That is after short words like ma uh, or Che posso, che dici. So in this case, I have marked it in uh, blue so that you, we can remind ourselves to do that. I also wrote, uh, for example, the double M for nomi when the N becomes an M, which is called assimilation. Um, in the places where I am afraid that I will read two syllables, you will remember that it's easy for us to read, for example, the Nardo line, Signori Allegramente, instead of Signore Allegramente, right? So I put little pink, little slurs to remind me that the vowels go together. I also put little lines to show me where the syllables are in the places where I'm afraid I will put 
that to pain a stone, no, instead of a stone in the no, right? So that syllable ends on O, and then the N goes there, no glottal. Uh, here, this line we worked on a lot last night. Che in pace in allegria si son sposati. Uh, get a little sign that my internet is unstable. I'm still with everybody. Can you see me? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Oksana. Um, the blue line you see here is to correct the libretto that we're working from. Because che dici o tradimento o che gran sorte should be in one endicasillabo. Um just going to look through all of this recit and I will, you know, you can screenshot it when you get the recording, um, if any of this does not make sense. Some of these uh, stresses you will see I put in parentheses like Marquesina, right? If we read this whole line, una dolce vendetta Marquesina, it's not Marquesina, of course, the, the tonic stress on that word is on Z, Marquesina. Uh, so not all the stresses are this are similarly important. Um, it's important for everybody to say, for, if you say, well, my Italian is good enough, I don't have to mark all of them, fine, you don't have to mark all of them. But if you're not sure that you're going to have the correct stresses, please go ahead and mark them. Um, I also mark where it is going to go across the line. For example, il fedele Ramiro anch'io se si contenta, right? So that I remind myself that this Arminda line is completed by Serpetta and that is one in the Casilla wall. Okay, um, this is the entire final restative. Um, and so you will see uh, if you are young and new to Italian recitative. It doesn't take a long time to do this at all, but it really helps you not mispronounce the words, okay? Please tell me in the chat if there is anything that you are not clear on. So now, how do you translate this work from the libretto to the score? So step one, we want to find a way to be able to see the libretto in the score. So when you go from the poetic form that you can see clearly that you find on, I remind everybody in the chat, one of the places to find it is libretti d'opera.it. Okay, and in yesterday's uh, session, there were other places, Google Books and so on, where you can find good libretti. So. The first step I do again, it is, it is this is these are exhaustive steps to really make help you not make any mistakes. Circle the rests that correspond with the verti, versi sholti line ending. So that means you will know where that line ends, and then mark where the composer read across a line ending. Okay, you want to be able to continue to see your poetic form in the score. So. Before I show you, let me just show you what, why I do. Uh, if you have the Vakai project, um, we have in the in the uh, recitative lesson, we do this so that you can see, right? And you see these dark circle, dark red circle around the rest. That is denotes that is around a rest that denotes a line ending of Ersi Sholti. And if you see this dark a uh, red slur, that is where the composer did not put a rest. So, um, for example, if you look at La Patria Un Tutto, this rest is in the poem line ending, but this one is not. That's why this one doesn't have a rest, okay? So, we are going to remind ourselves just the beginning of the rest that we're dealing with. There is a line ending after Cara and after Farvi, so if we look at the music after cara there is not a rest so we put this dark red slur so we know the poem is manipote mia cara then non mi secate più del po uh, sorry i need my glasses i cannot see um non mi secate più che posso farvi that is the end of a line because that's where I, why I put that little um, slur, nello stato presente. Why is that important? Because you can choose to make extra uh, stops 
if the composer didn't put a rest there, right? They were basically taught to put rest there, but sometimes it doesn't work out in the 4-4 time. Please write to me in the chat if you, I'm talking too fast about stuff and you're not getting it, okay? So, for example, if you can put a rest here because man nipote mia cara non mi seccate più can make perfect sense with or without a break. And um, if we, in the next step, we will see that it influences the placement of the appoggiatura. And that is why it's important to know, right? Um, here, so if I look at my dark red, I can see the first line of the versi short is man nipote mia cara. The next line is non mi seccate più che posso farvi. The next line is nello stato presente. Then there's a circle around the, the rest so i know the next line is signore allegramente new line and so on makes sense to everybody scream to me if it doesn't step two transfer your poetic meter notes right and why is that important so these lines that i put under the long syllables in the in the libretto i transfer to the score now again you don't have to put all of them um especially if your italian is getting good but you particularly want to do it when you see a note value that will throw you off right because the idea is that you will not see the flags so in the finta restative we are looking for looking at maybe nipote and cara is not so important to underline or non mi secate but you see how it's important maybe to put a line on che posso farvi nello stato presente because otherwise you might be tempted to say Che posso farvi nello stato presente? Because that's what the flags are telling you. And that, as we say in America, is just fake news, right? You don't want to read those flags. You are trying to read only the note values. Uh, maybe I just go back. Um, Derek and I created this system of notes without flags in the Vakai project. Now, this, of course, you cannot write in your Baron Writer score. But here you can see we put the notes um, and we put in whole notes, whole notes, the long syllables, and in black notes, in quarter notes, the um, the short syllables. So we don't put flags. We're just trying to show what syllable is long and what syllable is short. Because in this recitative, you want la patria è un tutto di cui siamo parti. So all those whole notes are long syllables, right? And so the same thing is going to apply. Manipode mia cara. Non mi seccate più che posso farvi nello stato presente. So we, I am seeing those lines helping me understand what rhythm I should be speaking, singing, and not the rhythm that the flags are telling me. Step three, transfer your diction notes. If you made notes in your libretto, including phrasal doubling, that you are afraid you will forget when you start working from your score, please uh, move them uh, into your score and indicate the double consonants you tend to forget and draw a line through the single ones. You might be tempted to double, yeah? We're going to practice that in a hot second with Derek. So, for example, I put all the phrasal doubling here. Uh, just can somebody just tell me if I move my cursor here, can you see a little blue bubble? Yes, okay. So this double N, double M, I put my phrasal doublings in here. Um, if I'm afraid that I will say secate instead of seccate, I can put a circle around my double Ks. Where's a song, a consonant that I might double that's not? If I'm afraid I want to say guariti, yeah? If I was speaking this with Derek and Derek said, please don't say guariti, say guariti. I think that was one of the things that happened last night. Then put a line through that T so that you remember that you shouldn't say it strong. Uh, Derek, are you still rugby watching? Can you come do some double consonant practice with uh, us? Step two, yes. I can go back to step two. Thank you, Derek. So, Braden, this is step two. Put a line under the long syllable because you don't want to see the flags. Yeah. Anything specific about that, or did you just want to see it one more time? I just, just want to have another look. You want to have, have, have a run? Look? Okay. okay. I'm, I'll read through it to make sure. Put a line under any long syllable you might be tempted to forget under all of them if you are new to recitative singing or Italian is not your strong suit. 
This is particularly important when you see a note value notated that might throw you off course, right? That is, you see a short note, like a 16th note notated, but you know it's a long syllable. Remember, you are trying not to see the flags unless they show you specific information and then they tend to show the natural scanning of the perm in any case. This is not really, this you will not see in Finta ever, but once you start doing Verdi recitative, you will sometimes see that there's a dotted rhythm. Um, in some extreme cases, you can even see weird things like uh, triplet, but that really happens very um, seldomly. So every once in a while later, in later styles, you will see that rhythmic notation in the recitative gets more specific specific um, and then you can look at it more but the last sentence here says they tend to show the natural scanning of the poem in any case right when Der uh, when uh, Derek when Verdi is writing dots dotted eights followed by 16th notes that is literally going to be a long syllable followed by a short syllable does that make sense is that clear sir perfect okay so um after last night, I thought we would do just a little Italian single and double consonant practice because a lot of these things with like finding the, the stresses, once you kind of get into the flow of things, you're probably going to make good decisions. And, you know, if you make a wrong decision here and there, I can help you fix it once I get to Michigan or once I, Derek and I get to wherever we're working in person. But the thing that is very hard to fix is when people start to get used to this idea of doubling consonants that should be single. So we made a slide here for you to take to heart and dream about every night. To make a single Italian consonant, the articulator or articulators, that is the tongue and or lips, must move to the position of the consonant and depart this position in a single motion. That is, if the position for L is this, uh, then in order to say a single consonant, you're going to say so, la, 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 la. the tongue is going to move up and down in one motion. But if you're going to say bello, the tongue is going to stand up during a double consonant, the articulators linger in the position of the consonant. So Derek has made you a single and double consonant practice uh, practice slide so you're going to practice with Derek and uh, so your job is to find all of the work when all through your libretto that's not just restative right all through the libretto make sure that you know you want to see those doubles jump out at you and then you're going to practice saying them in this way so before we do uh, specific words let's just practice a couple ones so first Double M would be um, 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 uh, and single M would be um, 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 uh. now double L and then single L. Double N and single N. Double T and single T. Ta 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 a ta ta ta. Now single D. A da 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 da. Now change that D. Just take the voice out of it. A da 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 ta. To make the single T. Yeah. A da da da. Good. Got it. All right. So let's read together once through this whole list. Yeah, starting with fato and fatto. So you notice how this fato and fatto take the same amount of time, but it's whether it's the vowel taking more time or the consonant taking more time. Yeah. So some people say that if you don't, if you have a single consonant, imagine a doubled vowel. Yeah. So let's read it together. And then I'll ask some specific people to read specific lines. Ready? And fato, fatto, sano, sanno, seno, senno. Coraggio, carrozza, fumo, fumo, fattura, fatale, sono, sonno, papa, pappa, papà, adagio, formaggio, pene, penne, preso, 
presso volli vola. All right. Oksana, first line. Fatto, fatto. Sano. Good. I can I can stand for the the vowel of fatto to be shorter. So fatto and then fatto. Fatto, fatto. Good. Braden, second line. Sano, sano. Good. Braden, will you read the second line? The sano? Yeah, yeah. Sano, sano. Good. Even Good. longer vowels. Sano, sano. Sano, sano. sano. Yeah, say yeah, for say me, for sano, me. Like, sano a like a triplet. Sano. Mm, that's a double N. Sano. Sano. Good. Good. And, and sano. 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 Good. Good. Now, now next, next line. line. Braden again. again. Seno. Seno. Good. So if you Good. move so your you tongue move at your all tongue in that vowel, it's going to sound like a double N. Seno. 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 Senno. Good. All right. Good. Who's next? All right. Who's next? I'm mute. It's hard for us to see everybody because we're in this weird uh, share mode. Who is this? Uh, Melanie Walker. Can you speak? Yeah. You want the coraggio? Please. Coraggio. Yeah. Coraggio. Carosa. Carrozza. Carrozza. So, coraggio and Carrozza, carrozza. Coraggio, carrozza. Good, but make sure not to roll the R in co coraggio. Coraggio. Good, next line, Melanie also. Mm -hmm. Fumo, fumo. Good, the M was, was, the single M was doubled. So, fumo, fumo. Fumo, fumo. Yeah, if you try to listen to the M while you're making it, it will double, yeah? So, fumo, yeah. fumo. Fumo, fumo. Good. Kennedy, are you able to read the next two? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Fattura fatale. Sorry. Good. Say for me, fattura. Fattura. Yeah, so... Fattura, but then fatale. Oh, fatale. Better, but one else. Fatale. Fatale. You guys just say ah la la la. Ah la la la. Yeah, I hear the back of your tongue going up and going ah la la instead of ah la la la. Like a, I don't know, like a lizard pops out its tongue. Fatale. Fatale. Better, good. Now, uh, last one, sono and sonno. Sono, sonno. Good, all right, Roji. Give uh, me, give me fatto and fatto. Okay, uh, we, uh, fatto, fatto. Good, next line. Sano, sanno. Good, fan you. Seno, seno. Good. Even more vowel in seno. Seno, seno. Good. Next line. Caraggio, carrozza. Good. Hazal. Last three. Fumo, fumo. Good. Fattura, fatale. Sono, sonno. Good. Say for me again, fatale. Fatale. Mm, too much G. Fatale. 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 Good. Say for one time, just, just the consonants. Fat. Fata. Just F and T. Fat. Fat. Fatale. Fatale. Yeah, you have to imagine that the F and the T are going in the same direction, yeah? I hear... Mm -hmm with like a backwards motion instead of mm -hmm. fatale. Fatale. 
it's one of those weird things. It's almost like chakaturas, right? When we say it's in the same space, like when the consonant is single in that construction, you know where ta is, but fada, fada is like in the same place. You cannot separate fa, fa, ta. You cannot rhythmically say what is where. It's kind of in the same uh, space. Fadale or fa, uh, fadale. No, that's the only one that's like that, right? That has the three syllables. Even when it's separated by rhythm. So you have like, oh, dom, fadale. Right? That ta is going to come soon. Yeah? Good. Very good. All right. Great. That's everybody. Thank you very much, Derek. Okay. So step four, um, here we are moving on to uh, something that is specific to pianists um, and conductors, but it's good for you to know because, you know, you know when to sing as well and you need to help. Please remember that when you were, when all of this uh, was all of this music was sung. There was no such thing as a conductor. So we say you conduct the orchestra with your penultimate long syllable. It helps us to understand where to place the chord. And if you're a pianist or a conductor, also singers, notate the conventions, that is final short quarters and articulations that do not come naturally to you yet. I will show them to you now. Indicate all the places you can give the voice freedom by placing the chords or starting the melodic interjection after the voice finishes. A famous example of this is the introduction of da dum da da dum pum 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 drum 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 drum. Giunse al fine il momento. Right, you want to have the orchestra finish and then start. Um, why do we know that? This is Garcia in his treatise from 1847, uh, saying the in recitativo accompagnato, the voice must remain completely clear from the accompaniment, with the exception of moments of arioso, that is little moments where it sounds like a tiny little aria enters into the recitative. The chords are only played once the singing has stopped and vice versa. And here are examples from Mozart's Don Giovanni. And here are examples uh, from an aria by uh, of the aria of Joseph in an opera by Mehul, which we do not know these days, but this one from Bellini's Beatrice. And so you will see here, you will see that the orchestra starts playing while the singer is singing, but is here he writes, let the voice finish before starting the accompaniment, okay? Um, in Finta, there are some examples like that, that we will get to uh, maybe to, no, we will not get to it today, but we will get to it when I get to Michigan. But I am going to show you again, the um, in the book, you will see, some of the articulations and here uh, I wrote when you have this construction that sounds in the orchestra that final quarter is always short right so it is not ta -ta, al cittadino, but it's a short note and when you look at the beginning of this it is all articulated. Sometimes pianists play ta -ta, dee -dee, da -da. No, it is pa -pum, pa -pum, pa -pum. It's all short with like a little comma articulation um, after it. We, as I said, um, we have lots of re rest days in Michigan and I will talk more about it. Uh, if you have the Vakai project, uh, there is more about it as you look through this recitative. Also, um, there is an extensive discussion of the restative before Devieni Non Tardar that I believe is on the website and I think it's in free resources. There's a video and there's a whole markup that helps you get good at this. Uh, but as I say, it, it's a little more important for pianists, repetitors. Okay, now we come to prosodic appoggiatura. Mm -hmm. This is the part where we have now dealt with how you shouldn't sing the rhythms that you see on the page. Now, very often you should also not sing the pitches that you see on the page. So we are going to review a little, even though we have done this many times, because it is very important in the restative, we have to review it again. So what do you have to do? What is step five in the restative preparation? Mark all the places that require an appoggiatura based on where you decided to punctuate, right? So 
the appoggiatura has to be placed when you punctuate and we are going to review those rules now so just chill out don't fret note the places where the composer might be prompting you to change your mind because of chord placement so that is when you were reading the libretto you're like i am going to pause here i'm going to breathe here in those places you have to put an appoggiatura but once you look at the score you might want to change your mind because he might have made a rest or taken out um, a line ending. So here is the review. The appoggiatura does double duty. It occurs as a melodic in ornament, but here we are now talking about it as a prosodic <coughs> appoggiatura. It results from poetic stress <coughs> and is usually not written. So what you see here is an example of another versi sciolti. And I may dove trascorse, ove mi spinse, o delirio d'amor. You will see that you can see the same poetic form happening here. Um, and when you look at this slide and you see Corri say, uh, if you were in um, ornamentation boot class, you saw this slide that is written sposa with two Fs, Euridice with two B flats. Consorte with two C's, but he, Corey tells us that you must sing a G and a F, a C and a B flat, and a D and a C. And that is because the dissonance of the appoggiatura and its resolution support the stressed and unstressed syllables of the poem. How can I put this in easier, even easier language? Sposa has a long and a short syllable. That long and there it has an articulation. You're going to rest after it. That long syllable is going to take a dissonant to make it sound. Um, we said uh, in Cape Town Opera work the other day, not like two punches. Sport. Oh, where's my piano? My piano died. Oops. Never mind. Spores are two of the same notes. Sounds punch punch. But what you want to hear is spores are. Yeah, that dissonance is going to give you the lilt of long, short, long, short. Euridice, Euridice, consorte. Okay, so the dissonance of the appoggiatura and its resolution support the stressed and unstressed syllables of the poem. I put quotes here just to make sure that you know that I didn't make it up. This is what Cori says. I picked here Corrie because we are in Michigan dealing with Mozart and Corrie come, is from his time. Indeed, either an air or recitative sung exactly as it is commonly noted would be a very inexpressive, nay, a very uncouth performance for not only the respective duration of the notes is scarcely even hinted at, that's what we did in steps one, two, and three, but one note is frequently marked instead of another, as is the case where a note is repeated instead of that note with its proper appoggiatura or grace, in consequence of which the singer is misled by being made to sing a wrong note. So there is written a G, but you should sing an A. Um, Garcia says, when the first two notes of a bar terminate a member of a phrase, that is his way of saying, if you're going to make a phrase or a, mem a phrase, a full phrase or a member of a phrase, that is you're going to punctuate, the first always bears the prosodic accent, and for that reason, it is necessary to convert it into an appoggiatura. The effect of the two equal notes, which we now call at CT of, uh, at Cape Town Opera, the two punches would not be tolerable. Okay, um, this is a good way to not sit on the last syllable. If you are prone to sing spo, sposa. Euridice, Euridice, which so many people do. Yeah, raise your hand if that is a note you get. If you really put the appoggiatura and you lean on that dissonant note, you will not sit on the final note. So it has many, many good reasons for us to do it. Um, here is a slide also, uh, you know, as I say, we will make this recording available. Um, and you'll be able to spend more time looking at it, just pausing. Uh, here is the modern score of that of the bit where I took the example from and more of it. And you will always see how is writing uh, asking you to sing the appoggiatura. Um, 
Why did they not write it? This is the simple explanation. We go through this quickly because I want you, right, people I'm going to work with in the next two months, um, everybody, wherever you're going to work, you want to practice uh, being able to explain. The convention of not notating the appoggiatura has its roots in the conventions of writing for the continual group, the low strings and harpsichord or fortepiano. In addition to the convention of notating restative in 4-4 time, it was customary in the restative to, one, place the stressed syllables of the poem on beats one and three, that is a, no, a note that has that blue line, on, a word that has that blue line under it, that syllable is going to come on one or three. The new harmonies will arrive at that same time if there was a new harmony required. And they wrote only those consonant pitches on those beats so that the continual group would not be confused. Um, and we will look at, I will point that out in the example, uh, when we look again at the restative uh, of, and I believe we, uh, what I'm going to do now is kind of transfer the share. Um, let me just see who's here. Yes, I'm going to transfer the share and I'm going to take you directly to that entire restative that the Michigan students are studying. Okay, now you are going to see an additional thing here, which are which additional things, which are these arrows. Okay, everybody can see my screen, right? So you will see the things that you saw in the slides, like the the, the lines that tells you where the stress syllables are where you are going to where the poetry is your phrasal doublings all of those things now you have to decide where you must put the apoggiatoras so the places where you must absolutely put an apoggiatora is where there are two notes that's the same and there's a rest after it or you are going to make a rest so can you see how the first place and i'm just going to pick myself a big old color here and make like a big old green circle. So can you see how at the end of this line, presente is printed two Bs. Baron Reiter, who sweetly one, three, four bars later, I'm ritornati, if you let your ear, I go down there, you will see that they suggest an appoggiatura there. But in this Finta score that you all are working from, Baron Reiter has decided that if the note before the appoggiatura is lower, they don't put the appoggiatura, which is crazy, my people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because Baron Reiter seems to help you, but they don't help you if they only help you halfway, okay? This line, that sounds, uh, come piano. Ma nipote mia carina non mi seccata più, che posso farvi nello stato presente. Those are the two punches that you must avoid. So presente, you're definitely going to breathe after that because you're continue, not continuing to speak or sing, somebody else is going to speak. So you must have an appoggiatura there. That's why that arrow is red and that's why the appoggiatura is notated. You're going to sing mostly the upper note. You could also sing presente or presente an A sharp. Uh, don't break your head about why, what, how to choose. Mostly you're going to sing the upper appoggiatura. Now, I pull your attention to the top here. You have now seen because of this uh, red line that this is a line ending. So when you spoke your recitative, you might have said, Manipote mia cara. Non mi seccate più. And can you feel that I have, I'm lingering and waiting after cara? Man nipote mia cara. Non mi seccate più. Which makes perfect sense. But because of the 4-4 time rule, um, Mozart kind, or whoever wrote this recitative uh, just continued straight and didn't make a break. Now, if you are not going to make a break with Mozart and sing, you may uh, omit a, a, a but 
if you decide to make a break here, you must put an appoggiatura because it's a member of a phrase. Does that make sense? I'm going to just see if anything's happening in the chat. Am I, is everything making sense so far? And that is at this point where you have to, uh, all through your recitative, say, where are the appoggiaturas that I must put? And where are the appoggiaturas that I can put? Now, here on Che posso farvi, you will see that there is a possibility of an appoggiatura again, because that is not at the end of a line. I mean, it is at the, actually at the end of a poetic line, but you very possibly want to say, che posso farvi nello stato presente and not make that break, right? So chances are when you read your poetry, your poem from your libretto, you read across that, you elided that line, you went on, right? So in that case, you don't have to put an appoggiatura, but you might want to, because Cori says that it gives grace to the line. So instead of, che posso farvi nello sta, you say like one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, six C's in a row. You might want to sing, che posso farvi nello stato presente. You see that the appoggiatura, the um, dissonance of the appoggiatura is giving shape to the line. Does that make sense? Um, so let's look over across a little more. Here you will see, Signori allegramente, son guarite nel pazzi. Fine, you can sing the notes that's on the page. You must sing the rhythm that's indicated by the little blue lines there, right? Now, look at the next line. This was a very difficult line to read last night for those of you who were here. E appena sono in senno ritornati. E appena sono in senno ritornati. So what's written is, Uh, can you hear this uh, piano? Maybe I need to turn it up a little. Somebody tell me, can hear it. Great. Thank you so much for being so on the ball. Now, you don't have to put any of these pink arrow appoggiaturas. Uh, you must, though, put the one at the end, right? Because for sure you're going to breathe there or pause because you're punctuating. There's even a comma. Sorry, you definitely must put that one. But appena sono, technically speaking, you could as well. And so you could sing appena sono in senno ritornati. But the stress on appena sono in senno, you see how that makes the line feel better if you sing appena sono in senno ritornati instead of appena sono in senno ri. Right? Does that make sense? That these um, blue notes, these appoggiatoras give more shape to the line and it feels that's more natural to sing. The appoggiatura will improve your feeling for the Italian language because it will help you keep your stresses in the correct place, right? Here is another example of che in pace in allegria si son sposati. If you decide to sing through this rest and you want to sing che in pace in allegria si son sposati, you could leave out the appoggiatura A, option A. If you make the rest, you must put the appoggiatura in pace, alle, a pace in allegria si son sposati. Option B. You can also decide to take out the rest and sing through the rest and maintain the appoggiatura. In pace in allegria si son sposati. Option three. I am going to stop the share and look at you. Actually, only look at mostly blank screens or smiling faces does that make sense how you discern where to put appoggiatoras it seems exhaustive but it helps you to really then when you sing sing the right notes because otherwise you learn the notes that's in the score then Rachel arrives or a conductor or whoever it's like where your appoggiaturas then you have to redo it right this way based on whether you want to continue speaking or whether you want to stop speaking uh, and breathe or uh, punctuate, you already know where you have to change the pitches. Um, there is a, in this, I'm going to re 
share the screen here because there is one very interesting place where oops wait am i right where is my oh here it comes um this is still in the same restative so here you see that derek wrote i wouldn't break be because is that because because it would separate separate the subject and the verb, right? So yon caro abraccio conoscervi fara, right? So Derek says if he sang, he would sing just uh oh yon caro abraccio un cono un co un conoscervi fara. Right. So un caro abraccio conoscervi fara la fet. Tomio. Sorry, I'm trying to like play and look in two different ways. So the other example that comes up here is a place where you should not put an appoggiatorum. Now, imagine once, first think about where the, the, um, the poem is taking you. You remember our red circles, right? So you see that il ferele era miro anch'io se si contenta is one line in the poem. We know that because we didn't put a circle around the Ramiro. You also see this ellipsis and you see from your translation that il fedele Ramiro is just the beginning of a sentence. That's what is happening. Serpetta is interrupting Arminda. And this is a great place where you know, even though there are two C sharps, two punches, don't put an appoggiatura because you're not punctuating because if you were continuing to speak you would have just continued so in this case when we work in 10 days or however long before i get there we will actually work to get this a uh, of anchio at the same time as the c sharp and therefore we're going to put no appoggiatura and you see that after contenta here you will see again, this is where a new poetic line starts. Vorrei bene, ho capito, is one po poetic line. So do not put an appoggiatura on vorrei because it helps us to clarify that the porista is interrupting serpetta in this moment. Otherwise, it sounds like you have said a sentence or a part of a sentence and then somebody else spoke. But in fact, you are getting directly interrupted okay so stop the share we are almost there now you have basically done all of your writing work all of your coloring in your libretto you have transferred your libretto notes to your score and you have also in your score clarified where you must sing different pitches is this clear to everyone you have gone through all the steps clarifying which rhythms you have to sing based on the poetry also of course how fast you're going to sing it how loud you're going to sing it those are the other steps from yesterday you can of course put that in the score as well if you want sing slowly here sing fast here um you and now with the appoggiatoras you have clarified where you need to sing different pitches than the one that ones that you have seen so now all you have to do is the last three steps this is step five six and seven and they are called and we're just going to just tell them before and then i'm going to show you them speak again speak and play sing and play and these are the last steps and let me see if i can just find a way to redo this share that I am trying to get so much better at. Um, I think all I need to do, oops, now I'm in the wrong place. Sorry, y'all. I must share the audience window. Okay. Step five. Speak again. Now, you're going to speak your recitative, recitative while looking at the score, right? So you're still speaking, but now you're looking at the score with all that information. Mark any midline, not obligatory appoggiatoras that might jump out at you. So any of these more pink line ones, if you're like, oh, I, I think that it would be nice to sing an extra appoggiatura. Um, you might find more or decide to take some out when you sing, right? So it's not an exact, it's not an exact science. 
pay special attention to the pacing of your rhyming couplets at the end of your recitative, right? So we're basically just trying to get you back to that place where you were at the end of yesterday, where you can now speak through your recitative. Now you can speak through your recitative while looking at the score. Now, here's a good reason to get good at piano playing. If you can do this step, you are really ahead of the game. Play the chords on the piano while speaking the recitative. It will help you get this feeling of how you're going to move from chord to chord. Uh, so most of you probably speak well enough to be able to play G, C, 6, D, you know, it's like play those chords on the piano. Of course, you don't have to play the notes exactly that is in in the realization of the score, right? Like if you just know that's a C chord, just play a C chord, or if you know it's a G chord or a G6 chord, play that chord. Why is that useful? Because that give, will give you a feeling of the me melodic motion as we move through the chords of the recitative. Um, the last sentence here is, is an interesting one. If there are places with out dynamic markings oops sorry not makings markings make sure to deliver your line in a way that inspires the orchestra to choose a suitable dynamic again this is if you're in an accompagnato if you decided in your speaking of your recitative that you're going to speak something piano and now you look at the score and you're like the next entrance of the orchestra is fortissimo then you probably want to change your mind about it right so now you have put music by with it i mean music meaning chords the chord structure and then the last step sing and play now sing the recitative while playing the chords sing it just the way you speak it with all the nuance you developed in your libretto steps very important try not to plunk out the notes of the recitative itself they are easy if the poem falls out of your mouth easily you'll be able to sight read it even if you're not a good sight reader it only goes so many ways i promise you if you can speak the poem and play the chords it will be so easy maybe you need a starting pitch and you're like oh it goes up it goes down and it will be so easy and you don't you skip out of the step of like and that is just going to make a terrible restative experience for you and this is how we come to end close tonight never sing your restative or anything else for that matter without expression you did it right so this is all trying to help you to already feel that you can be expressive when you sing when you sing your recitative so that you are not in a kind of morse code um making of syllables that have nothing to do with each other that has no meaning and that has no rhythmic or poetic flow so Braden. Fun you, Wushi, Oksana, Kennedy, Hazal, Melody, Melanie, any questions? Does that make sense? It seems truly exhaustive. And as you grow in, in the style, you will find that some of the steps you can skip because they come naturally to you. Or you will do it for a couple of recitatives and you'll be like, oh, it actually comes quite quickly once you've done one opera really in this way it does come to become much easier and um but in my experience these steps don't take as much time as it seems right now um and you know you don't have to do all the recitatives of the opera because you're only singing a part of it and you'll be surprised how quickly in fact you can go through the lines and make these decisions about your without trying to plonk it out in four four time um any questions about it the the part of like how it works you can only discover if you actually do it for yourself and you're like okay i can see are you going to mis make mistakes somewhere sure and i am completely there to help you fix them uh but in the process of doing it, you're going to be surprised at how much you will learn and how many of the correct decisions you will make. Any questions? 
either in person or in the chat. Derek, did I miss something? Mm -hmm. Derek's like, nope, it's eight o'clock. Was she all good? Do you think that will help? It's looking so, I can't wait. I can't wait to see you guys. I can't wait to see you guys. It's going to be great to work on it. And you have like a good solid 10 days. I would say like if you, um, I think everybody probably, even if you're working during the day and stuff, probably everybody has the possibility of uh, finding like a little time to sit with all of your speeches, especially your big restatives uh, to apply this process. Uh, Derek will make the videos uh, available. Uh, I think we'll probably send it directly to Miss Helton, uh, but we will figure that out in the next day or two. Okay, we have to run since I'm, you know, in my host's house and everybody has been quiet for an hour so that I could do this. Thank you all very much for spending your Saturday afternoon with me. I think that my team lost. So I need to go and drown my sorrows. I'm very sad. Um, I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure.